food check. Hmm. I'm running out of food. Just a few tins. But what if I can't take off or have to put down again? I'll need more food. Perhaps I should start growing those vegetables, just in case. But what's the best way and the fastest way to grow them? Should I put them in sunlight? Take them out of sunlight? Should I add water, reduce water? Should I try all these different types of soil? Now, I have to test all the options, but it's not like doing a physics experiment, because plants take a long time to grow, and sometimes they don't act like they should. Wouldn't you know it? Life or death situation, science line goes. And where did I put the phone? Oh. How can I help? Stella, we've been reading books about the countryside and how it's changing, and how it needs to be conserved. Yeah, because wildlife numbers are dropping. But we were wondering, how do they measure these things? They can't go around and count every dormouse and every squirrel in the country. Yeah, because animals are always moving. So how do they know if they haven't counted the same one twice? How can you find out what makes a plant grow in one place and not somewhere else? Yeah, would they have to test every plant? And how do they carry out tests on humans? Well, humans are animals, so it's just the same as testing on animals. OK. Well, say one person likes a new improved chocolate bar. That doesn't mean to say anyone else will. Stella, what do you think? So many variables. I'll need to go and think about it. I'll get back to you. When you're dealing with living things, plants, animals, humans, and trying to test how different things affect them, how do you carry out tests that will give results that you can trust? Now, I want to know that if keeping these beans in the sunshine will give better results than keeping them in the shade. How many do I test? One? All of them? And when will the results be of use?